Mr. Crispin here. It's May 2015 and I'm at Harrogate Model Engineering Show for the weekend, so let's have a look around. The main event is indoors, but outside we have a range of miniature traction engine and steam wagons. Just in through the door here we have Bongo and this is an extremely nice locomotive. It is the same one I'm building, only a little larger. Um, and this was built by Christopher Vine who at one time was also a Rolls Royce apprentice. I thought I'd get a few close-ups of this as it is a larger version of the one I'm building uh, for the benefit of the viewers if nothing else. So there we have the cab and you can see the regulator and the water gauges and the firebox. All this will be done on mine in a smaller scale. Zooming out, looking down the boiler. Once I've assembled the chassis and mounted my driving wheels, I can start looking at all these rods, which as you can see are all fluted and polished. And Just along from Bongo we have a lot more locomotives, all of varying sizes and types. I won't go into much detail on all of them, I'll just show the overall pictures, but there's all kinds of people's work here. over here. This is a beam engine and we have a nice clock over here. All built in members workshops. In front of the beam engine there we have a nice radial engine and uh, I think a radial engine may be my next project after this locomotive. I'm now looking at a third scale Bentley engine and um, I consider this the nicest work in the exhibition so let's take a few close ups. Looking at the front here this is the supercharger and this has been machined from solid and I'll show you some pictures in a moment of the setups that have been used to machine these uh, features. But have a look at these grooves, for instance, that have been machined using a dividing head and a tail stock. These covers that have been machined using a form tool, all done on a hard inch lathe and AC air and milling machine. Here are some of the setups in the milling machine, using the dividing head and ball nose cutters to cut all kinds of complicated profiles. This is cutting the casing for the supercharger and there is the finished supercharger machined from solid, hand fitted and shot blasted with a very gentle and blunt grit. Looking at the inlet manifold, this has also been machined from solid and I'll again show a few pictures in a moment but the engine's currently a work in progress. This shows how the inlet manifold was machined with the centre and the dividing head. And here it is at a further stage. This is all on the milling machine. Here the gear can be seen after it's been connected to the crankshaft, all machined from solid again. Looking up from underneath you can see the bottom of the crankshaft and um, all those little nuts are handmade down to the big gear at the end. Some pulse so as shown below that is machined from solid. And finally the Bentley panel on the front which has been beaten around a former. More locomotives that people have built. Here in the competition class is a locomotive that has appeared on my channel before. And that is this locomotive built by 
Richard Gibbon and uh, I filmed it for Maiden Run and this has uh, been highly commended in the judging. Here's a large model, quite a big traction engine. Also, there are a lot of boats here, almost as far as the eye can see. Here is one of my favourite boats to watch, and this is a skeleton-driven rowing boat, remote control, and despite common misconception, it is actually the oars that drive it. There is a propeller, but that is a dummy. All the mechanisms for the oars are hid in a cavity between the inside and the outside. Uh, I did have a look at it a few years back, um, but here it is in action. The oars are independent of course, so that you can go around corners. Also, a fairly large section on aeroplanes. Here we have the Stirling Engine Society. And uh, there is a diagram of how a Stirling engine works. And here they have all kinds of things powered by Stirling engines, so we'll take a closer look. There are all kinds of interesting Stirling engine designs here. The white things you see popping in and out are the displacement piston, and the small aluminium one in the middle is the power piston. I suppose you'd call that a radial engine. And there is something that's definitely a radial engine. Stirling engine driven, of course. And another form of radial Stirling engine, this time with the displacement piston is popping in and out uh, perpendicular to the power piston. And uh, there that you can see through the helicopter rotor is an interesting engine using marbles as the displacement. These locomotives are all built from scratch and run on live steam, uh, controlled by remote control. Here we have Mallard running in steam in miniature. Again, more locomotives everywhere you look. These locomotives are mainly uh, belonging to members of clubs and where the club has a stand they like to display members' work. Some uh, stationary engines in the distance. As well as uh, locomotives and stationary engines there are also the more slightly unusual things such as this scale transatlantic expedition. More locomotives in progress, these are prior to painting. Here's some work on display and I thought I'd show this because in a year or so or more I may be coming on to building my boiler and this is a locomotive boiler made from copper and silver soldered. Looking around the front there are a lot of tubes and uh, towards the back, the more rectangular section is the firebox where the coal goes. So uh, I thought I'd show that as I will be doing one of those in the future. Here is a locomotive not too dissimilar in size to mine. And I'm showing it just uh, for the benefit of the viewers to see what mine should look like in a few months. There are lots of tools and modern supplies here also. These... Here in the main tool hall is Warco with all their various machines and accessories. We have ranges of Warco lathes, drilling machines and saws, and milling machines, all suited for the home workshop really. More lathes down there. RDG are here with all their wares. One of my favourite stands here with all their measuring instruments. Machine DRO is the company. An interesting tool here on this stand is the spindle square with two dial indicators uh, mounted on a body so you can hold this in your milling or drilling machine head and uh, clock the head square by watching the two needles. 
here we have the Stuart model stand and I know these are popular right across the world. Everything from sets of castings for various engines to miniature machine tools. Here we have kits for triple expansion marine engines. They sell lots of new turning tools here as well as uh, used cutters and tips from Jaguar Land Rover. Tracy tools are also here with tap dies and drills. Model engineers laser are here and these people specialise in laser cut kits for small locomotives. So you can buy a complete kit and just solder it together. Here on the York Model Engineers stand, me and my friend Tony are doing CNC turning demonstrations in this little Boxford lane. And uh, Tony is the owner of the two Boxford machines I have in my workshop. So we'll have a close look at these demonstrations. We are manufacturing buffers, as I have done in a previous video with a curved front. Uh, we were unable to tap them on this machine, but they are otherwise finished. So I'm going to do a separate video showing the actual demonstrations we're doing, and that will be titled um, Boxford CNC Turning. So I'll put a link to that here. There we are. That's a look around Harrogate 2015. Thanks for watching. I hope you've liked what you've seen, and see you on the next video.